So let's explain line by line what every line of the kernel does. So that's our definition of the kernel is we, uh, a kernel has, is um, distinguished by this global qualifier. So the, the global qualifier means that this is a function that is designed to be executed, um, so to be launched from the host and run on the device. So that's what global means. And so if you have a global outside your function, that means it's a kernel. So that's what, um, that's what defines what a kernel is. Now, a kernel always has the return type of void. So there is no, there is no information that is passed back uh, to the host from a kernel launch. Um, what you do is you extract information from the GPU using a separate memory copy at a later step. So that's how we get information back out of the GPU. So all kernels on the GPU have return type of void. And this is the name of the kernel here. So the, the kernel name is matmult. Now there are a few different qualifiers that you can apply uh, to these functions. Now the global qualifier obviously means that um, the function is a kernel and it's meant to be launched from the host and run on the device. But there is also another qualifier called the device qualifier. And if you just have a function by itself um, without the global qualifier, but with the device qualifier, then this signifies that the function is a function that is to be compiled for and run on the device. So this is what they call a device function. So a device function has the device qualifier out the front. Now the global and device qualifiers are mutually exclusive because the global qualifier says that it is to be launched from the host and run on the device, but the device qualifier says that it is to be run on the device. Okay, so there is another qualifier that you can have and that is the host qualifier. Now, so that specifies that the function is to be run on the host. Now, ordinarily, um, you don't really need this qualifier because functions that um, you define on the host are to be run from the host. So that's kind of by default. But what you can do is you can mix and match the device and host qualifiers. Okay, so you can mix, mix and match the device and host qualifiers. So you can have both host and device qualifiers on your function. And that means that that function is then a function that is designed to be run on both device and the host. And so what the compiler will do is that it will compile um, that function for both the device and the host. So uh, I've just got a footnote here. It's actually host and global that are mutually exclusive, sorry. Um, so yeah, I was saying that it was global and device, but it's host and global that are mutually exclusive. So you can't have host and global uh, together. So kernel arguments, um, all arguments that are copied or that are passed to the kernel are copied by value. So to the device by value when the kernel is called. So the number of arguments that are passed in, so the number of arguments that are passed into the kernel um, here must equal the number of arguments that are passed in at kernel launch. So these arguments here and these arguments here, they have to line up. They have to, um, they have to have, you have to have the same number of arguments. Okay. Um, now it is a source of a bug if you have one data type on the launch. So let's just say that N1C is an int and 
when the argument is passed in, it is passed in as size t. If that occurs, um, if that occurs, I think this can happen in OpenCL, um, but then that can be a source of an insidious form of bugs. <laughs> so uh, you need to make sure that your data types are consistent. So I had problems with this in OpenCL, but I haven't really tested um, to make to make sure that the compiler checks for this. But um, but you always it's always good to make sure that your data types are consistent um, when you are passing them into the kernel. Okay. So if you passing in if you have this listed as size t in the kernel, make sure that you are passing in a size t um, a bit of data. Okay, so kernels have return type void. Um, now memory may not be allocated dynamically within the kernel. Okay, so that's one thing that is possible, I believe, in CUDA, but not possible in HIP. So memory may not be dynamically allocated within the kernel. So all memory allocations on the device must be performed beforehand from the host or at kernel launch. Now, what I mean by that is um, down here when I'm launching the kernel, you might notice that I have the amount of shared memory that I would like to use. And I've set that shared memory equal to zero because we don't use any shared memory for this example. In later examples, in the advanced course, I will be talking about how we can use shared memory. And if you like, you're more than welcome to um, have a look at lesson six and that in that lesson, and that is part of the advanced course, in that lesson, I talk about how you can use shared memory. Okay, so that's what I mean um, when I say that um, you can allocate dynamically at kernel launch. So that is, um, that is one way to reserve shared memory on your, uh, within your kernel is to specify it at kernel launch. <clears throat> 